Hello everybody, Edu It's Tate here from the beautiful Big Island of Hawaii. Today, we'll be talking about a follow-up on that drone. Heard enough it. And if it's still worth it, stick around. Welcome back everybody. If this is the first time to my channel, please hit the small subscribe button. Hit the bell right next to it if you're interested into eye candy episodes such as my dust it off or if you are interested into reviews and all that stuff that I do in here. Today I want to talk to you about the Parrot Anafi. It's pretty much a follow up. I've been using this drone for quite a while now. Have never flown drones before. Got into this Parrot Anafi right here and... Today we'll ask the question, is it still worth it the $640 or $590 for used ones or refurbished on the market? First of all, I wanted to explain to you that this drone alone, in my eyes, still beats the Mavic because a friend of mine had a Mavic that he brought around and we flew it together. And while I was doing some daredevil stuff, he actually was unable to do it even though he knew how to turn off the collision sensors on his DJI. And he just was overwhelmed with the options. He was overwhelmed with everything else. Not to talk down DJI, I believe that the collision sensors are great. But for the purpose of filmmaking, if you want to fly through tight spaces and all that stuff, I believe that the Paradanafi beats it because it seems to be a little bit more smaller and slimmer in profile than the Mavic and it also does not have all these collision sensors around and it does not do any of that stuff. On top of all that, manufacturing wise, it's probably the reason why it is $100 cheaper than the DJI. The DJI is a little bit more solid, it's not as skinny or plasticky as the Paradanafi. You have to be inventive about your shots and how you want to plan it on doing it, how to not endanger this drone to crash anywhere in in the water, into trees, get stuck somewhere up 25 feet into bushes and trees and branches. You have to be careful on the areas that you might be flying in at, that there's no people really, that there's no cars, that you don't fly over things. You don't have to deal with any collision sensors. You just have to learn how to fly the damn thing. Paradanafi is way more quieter it's a little bit wider but it had the ability to fly through tighter space that my friend were unable to fly through without having to turn off all his collision sensors he prefers to use the collision sensors and technically seen they're pretty good because they're going to prevent you of crashing into things so while looking at the whole standpoint how did the paradigm off you work out for me and if it's still worth it the money that i spend on it and if it would be still worth it to buy in case you decide that you want to go with it i would say yes because for the $590 to $650 that this product is given to you right now, it has a great software, a great product right here, plenty of accessories that you are actually able to purchase, such as extra batteries. What? Thought I turned the damn thing off. Sorry about that. It has a lot of accessories. It has a lot of available accessories for it, such as extra batteries, propellers, tools, extra parts actually, in order to replace motors that might break, arms that might break off. I crashed this drone probably about a 30 times and I had three to four really big crashes on it. And I sort of like cracked one of these arms right here. It is cracked, but it's not necessarily that the drone is not functional anymore. It still flies. I have an issue with the gimbal positioning right now because the way it crashed, there there is in here some rubber grommets inside there and one of these rubber grommets looks like that it is hanging lower than the, the other side. In the app I was able to adjust the gimbal a little bit more and the camera but it still has like that the horizon seems to be off once in a while but other than that it's okay I can fly with it and the footage still looks great and you can do a lot in post-op. Post-op? Post-op? Post-production. <laughs> it's actually in post afterwards to adjust the image or whatever if you are not satisfied with the horizon alignment. Other than that, I gotta stop saying other than that before it was anyways. Other than that, <laughs> can say it again. But besides that point, this drone is still worth the $650 to invest in it. I've seen a lot of announcements lately because you have the Skydio 2 coming out, which is more of an action drone, I believe, and you can utilize the, the beacon and stuff to have the thing follow you. I have seen the reviews and there is a couple questions that I have with the Skydio actually. Is there extra batteries? Is there multi-charger available? Are there uh, other functions that the Skydio is not being able to avoid, such as power lines or whatever? whatever because most of the review videos that I've seen actually didn't really show if anybody was flying past power lines really or I had to go past power lines especially not like over here in Hawaii we have telephone poles like every 50 feet and they have power lines running through it besides the telephone wires and my question is Skydio is it worth it thousand dollars pre-order plus 
$150 each for the beacon and the controller and all that stuff. The controller looks just like the Paradon Alfie. It's the same thing, probably a little bit different software. I mean, if people want to spend it, no problem. I love my Parrot, which is half the price of it, and it's still great for beginners. I say it that way before you go and get into bigger drone setups, such as $4,000, $5,000 drones, whatever, that is going to cost you a lot of money and a lot of parts and whatever else it is. But for beginner videography and all that stuff, this drone does it all and it's great. If you set up your stuff and you think about what you want to do with your drone and what type of shots that you actually want to go for, this drone does it all and it's amazing. I got this drone out as far as 1.4 miles. I didn't want to go any further than that because I always got that GPS tweaking, Wi-Fi, weak signal-y, whatever thingy going on. It was cool with me. I had no problems with it. I went 1.4 miles. 1.4 miles is a huge distance because if you gotta walk 1.4 miles because the damn thing crashed somewhere, oh well, you gotta walk 1.4 miles and locate that stuff. So yeah, you don't really want to do that. So I have some footage for you guys of the stuff that I shot so far with this Paradonaf and what is possible. I hope you guys gonna enjoy it. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell right next to it, hit me up in the comments and let me know what's going on. Peace out. Aloha. Aloha.